Hey, this is Michael Treadway. Welcome back to another tutorial on the welder's lens. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to finish up the crud trap. Uh, there was a series I did on the crud trap assembly, and this will be my last piece. I'm going to knock this out. I've got to deliver this in a couple of days to the customer, uh, but I did want to walk you through the rest of the process of this other prototype that I'm building. Uh, so far, I had my 90 welded onto my flange. Uh, my flange now is two hold to the piece that I'm welding it to, which has threads on the end of it, unlike the other piece had a flange on the end of it. I've got my torpedo level, and I lay that on there and make sure that this plane is level. That's okay, that's good. Then I can go ahead and check my two hole right here. And what you do is you, you line your level up with just an edge of the top of your two hole showing, which I uh, use all the time, this torpedo type level. Uh, I don't normally use uh, two hole pins, although they do make the job easier at times. Uh, this is good, it's riding the line a little bit on that side, but we're okay on that for what I'm using it for. And then I level my face of my flange, I don't have to, but just to show you another coordinate orientation, I go ahead and put that on the face of my flange so you can see it. I've got it right there. And this straight line level right here, according to the way that I'm trying to level this, it's, it's good. So everything is in good shape. I've already put my piece in the jacks. I've got my vice clamps on it, my chain vise. I've got a piece of angle supporting this to this underneath clamped together. I've got my spacer in it. I've got my machine turned on and put my heater about 85, 86. The only thing that I changed, uh, I did get some new gloves. That's so soft. Brand new gloves are the best for a welder. And these are, these are Black Stallion uh, 850M series. It's a Nomex line glove, which I don't need for what I'm doing, but it's all they sell where I buy. Uh, they're good, they, they're fire resistant interior. But this is an elk skin. Now, there is a difference between this elk skin, the yellow color, and the white. I personally like the yellow. I wear a size medium. These gloves are about $21 a pair, right? But they're well worth it because they're supple uh, as compared to, let me grab them real quick. Just hang, hang out with me there for a second. I just have these on hand. Uh, someone gave me these. I don't use them unless I absolutely have to. Gloves of this nature, these type of gloves, they're all right. They're good. They're real good because they were free. These are a blue saber, which I don't know if I've ever even heard of those. A guy dropped these off, a supply seller. And uh, they're just stiff to work. And so I spend the money because I already had surgery on my left wrist because of carpal tunnel. My right wrist is not doing that great. But if you'll take the time and you'll buy decent material, these things are real flexible. Uh, you could almost TIG weld with these. They're so flexible. But they hold up well. They're thick. All the seams are hidden. But anyway, they're, they're probably the best that are out there. So I've got everything set up to weld. I just put some brand new clear lens in my hood. Drop my safety glasses down, put my ground on, and I'm ready to fire up. I'm trying to knock this out this evening. I'm at my shop. Uh, it's late in the evening, and I'm trying to go ahead and knock this out so I can get back home. Uh, whenever you have, and you put a ground clamp on something, and you have some threads or the face of a flange, you don't ever want to ground to where the gasket will seal or where the thread makeup will be. So that's a lot of times why these clamps have a bell hole type uh, application. I can go ahead and put this on there, as you can see that, and clamp it, and it'll rest on there, but it won't actually bite the thread. I'm not worried about the inside so much. Uh, you sure don't want to arc out on it, but if I just connect to the face of that, that's not going to prevent my uh, my ball valve or whatever they're going to thread onto this union. It's not going to prevent anything from uh, threading on, but I don't want to arc out on my threads because it could cause some trouble. I've got my spacer, my little gap there. The only thing else, the only other thing, excuse me, that I've changed is uh, I'm using some 6010 
Today, instead of the 8010, I went ahead and bought some of this for future lessons. I, I really like this rod. It's a good, some guys like that red rod, I don't. I like this rod. It's real smooth uh, for a fast freeze rod. It's 20,000 pounds, tensile strength less than what I was using, uh, which is not, not a big deal for this. Most of the time you'll use a 60 series on a, on a root anyway. Then you'll cover it up with probably a, 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 a stronger tensile rod, a higher poundage that can take the pressure. So this is 5P plus, this is an Atomark, this is an ESOB rod. Uh, Atomark is their brand uh, by the company ESOB. And it's just real smooth. I'm gonna go ahead and fit this up while the camera is where it is. And then I'll go ahead and move the camera back into position like we've been doing. Unfortunately, the first video that I did uh, on the first crud trap that I built, some of, the, some of the projection did not catch all the puddle and I did not have the camera on manual. I left the camera on automatic and so it, it kind of moved in and out and sometimes the puddle was blurry, sometimes I didn't keep the puddle in the picture frame. So uh, that's why I surely wanted to capture this. Uh, I've got kind of a better method now that I'm using, still working by myself though. I'm gonna go ahead and put my tack in the top that way, if I have to, I can roll my two holes. I can move the flange perpendicular to the puck piece this way and get my two hole perfect. I've also already checked it with my square and my tape, making sure that the face of my flange is, is uh, parallel, perfectly parallel to the run of this pipe. And if I don't do that and make sure that thing is parallel and my, my measurement is right, I can't really tell by eye. You've got to use tools when you're fitting materials to get it just right, accurate. Uh, this thing would be off a little bit. It's not going to be super critical on this because of the application that's being uh, adapted to this head. But I just don't want to teach you any bad habits. I don't like to develop any. Because when I do get in a critical uh, position and, and something that's you know super critical, it's got to be right on. I don't have a bad habit that I've got to break in the process. So what you do is I showed you last time when you fit this, you run a straight edge. I've got an aluminum two-foot framing square. You run a straight edge off the face of your flange, right about the center where this tape measure would hit the pipe. And I've got seven and an eighth. You check it as far out as you can get your square by keeping your, your framing square flush on your face. You check it at the front one place, and then you check it at the back one place. And I've got about a 16th inch, less than that even, a, maybe a 30 second difference. So I'm not gonna fight with that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack the top, my two holes good, and then I'm going to secure this back side with a heavier little weld. It'll draw that 16th out before I tack the inside and lock it all in place. Okay, my earplugs in. Always wear earplugs. It's just a good habit. I have excellent hearing. I'm 43 years old. I have excellent eyesight. I always wear eye glasses to protect my eyes. Uh, some guys don't, but I choose to. I, I, I just. Your eyes are like a magnet for metal shavings and, and uh, sparks. And I've had sparks hit me in the ear before, and if I hadn't had earplugs in, it probably would have burnt my eardrum completely up. Okay, so I'm going to put a tack at the top, pull my spacer out, and then I'm going to put a tack on this back side closer to the camera, and then we'll go from there. Yeah. I'll tell you, this 6010 series rod, 5P Plus, is just a super smooth rod. And I've got to break this loose, get my clamps out, my, uh, excuse me, my spacer out, but I'm not worried about this going anywhere. I've got a good tack on the top. I've got the head, the flange supported on the jack stand head. You go ahead and work that out of there. 